Hey, my people. It's the iron underneath with another video. I just have to thank you guys for my 12 subscribers. I'm so shocked and amazed and flattered. I can't believe it. It's so cool. It's the best feeling in the world. And the comments have been so much fun to answer and talk about with you guys. And and you're all so intelligent and, and wonderful. It's just so much fun. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Mythos of Ice and Fire, as always, thank you so much for everything you've done for me and getting me out there. And Claire Gray, thank you so, so, so much for what you've done for me. I so appreciate you. Um, I think today, I know I've told you that I'm going to bring you a bastard video, which I am. It's just, I have like a notebook full and I'm losing my mind a little bit, going down the rabbit hole. So, um, I'll bring it soon, very soon. And, but today I thought I'd focus on our number one bastard, John. You know, I, I have my start pad on. I am the iron underneath, so I think I should talk about John. And it's just been a few days since Liam Cunningham was on Conan, and they released the clip of the scene with Alistair Thorne and, and the assholes trying to break down the door to get to Davos and the Night's Watch brothers and John and Go. And oh my god, I was so scared that that somehow Ghost was going to be sacrificed, and I don't know why, actually, now that I think about that, that I actually thought that. It's really funny, because John's in Ghost, so they would be killing him again. That doesn't mean, it doesn't compute. But I think I just listened to too many people, and what I really believed and actually wrote down somewhere is that he's just going to fight the guys trying to break down the door, which is what he's doing, but what is so cool to me and so beautiful about this if you want if you watch it again if you didn't notice this it Jon Snow Kit Harrington I should say is such a gorgeous fencer his, his sword fighting skills are beautiful his stance is gorgeous his his sword arm always up he's just gorgeous when he's fighting so when you look at Ghost in that clip, he's standing in the same stance as you would be if you had a sword drawn. And I feel like it's John in there ready to fight and ready to tear Alistair Thorne's throat out. And that, you know, just the feeling of Ghost growling is so cool. Ghost is he doesn't howl, he doesn't growl, and he's the quiet one, and he's growling, and he's really pissed, and oh my god, it's beautiful, because I really, I really see what they're doing, and I really appreciate what they're doing. I have the whole time, but, you know, I get skeptical, and I get, like, I think we all do, and go, what are they doing, the sand snakes and all that, but what they're doing is beautiful, and I think a lot of the things that we all bitch about are hidden in there, and we're going to see most of them. I'm frustrated a little bit again, so I'm going to smoke. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to bring this video now, now um, after saying that I have to. I <sighs> love that stuff. Got my heart racing. Um, I want to talk about mysticism and spirituality and the name snow and the word snow and a little bit about ghosts and what I think a little bit of it is about and where the words come from. So let's get into it. Um, I'm going to start in mysticism. In mysticism, it teaches us that all the events in the physical universe have a spiritual counterpart, right? So, it's like, um, a, like a teardrop. It's a human emotion manifesting in 
light coming out of our body. Same as water in the form of rain and snow, fleet coming from the sky. It's divine energy in this time. It's divine energy being brought to man. So basically God bring God or whoever you want to say. Um, nature, the gods. I say nature, the gods. Um, that it's bringing us its energy and its beauty and its its uh, manifestation of a spiritual reality of our universe, of our planet. So snow is a channel of energy the same way. Just like I just said. <laughs> it's basically um, just it's just a divine voice speaking through visual imagery that we can actually experience with our, our bodily senses. So looking at the spirit that lives in snow is water. So it's we know that it's an element that is a symbol of knowledge from Greek times. Um, it's like I talked about in my last video of the oily black stone with Jorah and Tyrion and their trip through the sorrows in the show where they quote from the same story that they both learned when they were young, and that most no, noble children learned when they were young, which was the doom of Valeria. Um, well, and it's the same kind of thing here where the, um, sorry, my cat just ran by and I totally lost my train of thought. Um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So, I'm not doing this video again, so I really apologize. Um, we know that water in all of its forms is a symbol of no knowledge. So, what I mean by that is, as I said with Joy and Tyrion, they discovered that they had drunk from the same fountain of knowledge. That's a Horace quote um, from the other thing that I talked about in my video about the oily black stone. Um, it's it's uh, a connection of the two of them with knowledge, which is the most beautiful connection between humans on earth. That's what we're doing. And it's what's important with people on this planet as well. So on a cosmic level, you know, it's teacher and student water to the earth, water to the land, I should say, in, our, in this story, is teacher to student, God to man. On a cosmic level, um, it represents the collective, the divine, other ways for the divine energy to flow from us from a higher spiritual place when we appreciate the beauty, the power of snow, and also what it hides, what it, actually what it tells the truth about, which is where part of the word comes from, is in Latin, uh, the part of the word for snow in Latin is truth and Truth and something, truth, truth and something, truth and nothing, but basically truth. And so when, you know, when we all start to get to a higher place, we all start to understand the earth, and we all start, or the land, and we start to appreciate it more. And I think that what's going on here has a lot to do with man not remembering 
and not learn. That's what it all is. So, the idea of educating through metaphor is expressed like, uh, it's expressed in um, the numerical secret of the word snow, of the Hebrew word for snow, which is a word I don't want to butcher, so it's called, it's spelled S-H-E-L-E-G. Shelegg? Please correct me. I really apologize if I butchered that word. I'm sure I did. I don't know how to pronounce it. And I didn't look up how to pronounce it. And I apologize for that. But the thing about this word is that the numerical equivalent of the Hebrew word for snow, this word, S-H-E-L-E-C, is 333. And that's because of the root of the word and the end of the word. So, the word broken down means, actually, the first part of it means the first letter of Semitic Avad, 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 sorry, Avad, which is really the building blocks of language. Of linguistics is that this is like it's the first letter, the first word. So then in Latin, the second part of the word that means what that means truth, trust, faith um, is a sort of it has a numerical value as well, and it also is a a word that means in Latin also to bear. It means that which carries. The thing that is sacrificed by the initial element used in the formation of compound words. So it's, like I said, a root of a, a word. It's a way of finding out what a word means. You break down words, you take one part from another part, put them together, find out what those two mean, and you have the word. Usually, you can do that e more easily in Latin-based languages, because they're all, you learn one, you can learn them all. Um, so, these words are are like that. They, at least the second word that I talked about, which is fei, F-E-I. And that word is Norwegian and and its number is basically a hexadecimal number and digit. So this all is something that's called gematria. And Kabbalah is where this comes from. Um, it is a couple Kabbalistic method for interpreting the Hebrew scriptures by computing the numerical value of words. It's based on their constituent letters or substituting one word for another word whose letters equal the same numerical sum. So, like I said, this word for snow equals its number is 333. Three, three. And 333, King Solomon, the wise one, as we all know, King Solomon, was said to speak in 3,000 metaphors. You know, I just talked about educating through metaphor, and that's what George is doing. He's educating through past stories, metaphor. He's... he's He's just taking everything that's important in our world and using it. So, <coughs> um, what's so great about this is that the number 3000 also equals the number for snow. So, 
So snow represents the concept also of 3,000 metaphors. So is he giving us somewhere around probably you now 3,000 metaphors? Or is that just saying that I'm going to give you a ton of stuff and you're going to figure it out? It's probably more like that. But it also reminds me of a thousand eyes and one. You know, it's kind of the same sort of concept. It's John is all these metaphors. He's the hero. And he's definitely on the hero's journey if I've ever seen one. And he's got his supernatural aid. He's got his death, his, an actual death and resurrection, actual resurrection. It's beautiful. So this is the only one I don't know that he's dumping on his head. He is in a little bit of a way, though, by making snow the name of a bastard and have a negative connotation. It is so cool, because he just flipped it. So um, the rest that I have to say about this, really, is just that the concept really of all of this is just to understand the process of how the universe was created. Building again. I'm always talking about world building. Brand the builder. World building. The, the stone. God. 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 Nature. Whatever you that's the way I said. Whatever you prefer. Um, the power couldn't allow the borders of divinity and spirituality to just ceaselessly flow and just do whatever you will with them. They had to be contained. So the way that they were contained is manifested in reflected snow. Isn't that interesting when you think about it? Because, you know, the boundaries of existence is the wall. The known world separate is separated by the wall from what is unknown. So the mystique of snow is because of its dual quality of, of heaven meeting earth. Water meeting land. You know, earth or elements. Water meeting land. Snow falling in front of you is bearing witness to the kiss of the gods into what mysticism calls the mundane, but what I just call our beautiful life that we're blessed enough to have. So, um, the other part that I wanted to talk about is ghosts. And the, well, there's one little part of this left that I should probably say is that in literature, when authors use weather, they, it's never just weather. You know, it's always got a symbolic meaning to it. So, Authors use rain, snow, tornadoes, volcanoes, earthquakes, things like that, in various ways to enhance the meaning of a story. So snow can also lead to death, of course. It can symbolize vast emptiness and nothingness, and just almost desolate desolation. There. Um, the coolest thing, though, about snow is that it doesn't discriminate at all. You know, I mean, if, if you think about it in our world, when it snows, a Mercedes and the oldest Honda look exactly the same because they're covered in snow. People look the same when we're covered. Animals, you know, you can pick which animal out that it is, but you can't see what color it is because it's white. So.
So I think this is why ghosts are so important and pure and so important in ways that I have not caught on to until now. Um, wolves figure prominently in almost every Native American mythological set in almost every tribe. So in most Native cultures, the wolf is considered a medicine being, and the wolf is associated with strength, courage, um, loyalty, and success at hunting. And they say it's like bears and wolves Bears and wolves are considered closely related as closely are closely related considered closely related to humans by many North American tribes. And the origin stories of some tribes say that their ancestors transformed from a wolf into a man. And the Shoshone mythology, the wolf plays the role of the noble creator god. The wolf character is the brother and the true best friend of the culture hero. How wonderful is that? The true best friend of the culture hero. So there's our hero. And you know, this is what I say to everyone who says is Jon Snow dead. He's our hero. It's the hero's journey. It's the biggest hero's journey. And it's so beautiful. You know, you just have to know a little bit about storytelling and, and writing and making Joseph Campbell. He's wonderful, by the way. Um, the thing about bears that I thought was so interesting is that Varner Sixkin, in the prologue chapter, talks about his, how he, his main war companion is the bear. And he, he says it's the easiest to inhabit wolves, but it's even easier to inhabit a bear. Or they're equally the same, but I think he said it's easier. And so, how how interesting is that? That that bears and wolves are said to be the ancestors of men. Um, so, really, I'll just kind of leave you with this one last part. The wolf character among Pueblo tribes is one of the six directional guardians and the Pueblo tribes are in New Mexico and Georgia. Wolves are considered one of the six directional guardians associated with the east and the color white. So there you go guys and when you dream of wolves this is just the last part to dream of a wolf. Oh, you are the best person in the world. Thanks, baby. I love you. It's a nice company I have. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Love my dream. Cheers, Tony Capuan. I saw you drinking the shot top. And I agree. I put a I put an oil. You don't like the orange, you don't like the orange, right? So, to dream of a wolf is a representation of self-confidence, beauty, mystery, solitude. It indicates that you have a solitary nature, that you're alone. And we know that you're alone. Um, they also symbolize aggression, hostility, 
a reflection for a situation or a force in your life, in John's life, that he's powerless against. He's had most of his life be power, he's powerless against. He was powerless against Captain. He was powerless about going to the wall. Well, he wasn't, but really what else would he have done? And I think he probably would have been needed to go there anyway because they have to, they have to find another place for him to be the king. Not have been good. So, the white wolf in the dream represents victory and valor, and it indicates the ability to see the light. No matter how dire the situation, that's John. If you see yourself killing a wolf in a dream, it's an indication that you've betrayed your have been betrayed and your secrets have been revealed. As brain seen a wolf killed in the dream, I just can't think of, of it right now. I feel I know I feel like he's seen you know, I know he's run with the wolf pack. Maybe it's Arya. That saw something like that, but please tell me in the comments because I really can't remember. But that would be kind of amazing, wouldn't it? So either way, it's it's one of those things that deals with Bran, and it also deals with John. <clears throat> but I don't think John's seen a wolf be killed. He's just really curious about why the hell he's dreaming about wolves. So, cool. so, like I usually do, I'll leave you with a poem. And it's from Fairly Mollett. We have doomed the wolf, not for what it is, but for what we have deliberately and mistakenly perceived it to be. The mytho mythologized epitome of a savage, ruthless killer which is, in reality, no more than a reflex image of ourselves. This is true. What we do. And the other one, the last one, is from Edgar Cayce. Last night, I dreamed I was chasing a pack of wolves trying to belong. Anyway, <clears throat> I want to do a little bit of a, uh, like a giveaway, because I want to give people away. And, um, so I thought what we could do is, I think we, we need to talk about our Flatellus Exchange, you know, we'll just do it's Tower of Joy is coming, and I think many of us might be very disappointed, and many of us might be very happy, but I think all of us are going to be very, very shocked, because I know that there are things there that we just don't get, because we haven't been given any information, or we have, and we've all led each other to one place, and we've failed to see something. I don't think so, though, because I think one of us would have caught it, and I think one of us has. I just don't know which one of us it is. So, I would love to hear your comments about R plus L equals J, or question mark plus question mark equals J, or question mark plus Liana equals J, or question mark plus Ashara equals J which I would hate, <laughs> but I do love the Shard The Elizabeth Taylor of Westeros, you know? How could you not love her? Um, but what I want to do is I want to give away a hat, because I have these really cool hats. 
So, let's talk about our plus LA today. And let's, because, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's what George asked David and Dan, is to, who's John's mother. And whatever they answered, whether it was right or wrong, they got the right to, to do his incredible story. So, whatever they said, made me trust them. So, here's my favorite one, actually. This is one I have one that my husband doesn't take off because he loves it so much. It's Targaryen, of course. Gorgeous. You see it? And then the back says fire and blood. Fire and blood. And then the other one is another fire and blood. Badass heavy metal looking hat. I love this. Fire and blood. It's got the dragons, the sigil, and on the back it says Targaryen. And then, this is my favorite hat. And if I love you enough, which I love my subscribers so much, that I will give it away. <laughs> if somebody really, really wants it, I'll give it away. This is my favorite one. This is the House Stark hat. And from HBO. The other two are from another company. But I don't know if say what that is. It is. Oh, no, oh, they're all from Game of Thrones. They're HBO, so. Didn't say more. I thought they were from the different. Anyway, this is the House Stark hat. It's got a gorgeous, um, kind of metallic, leathery looking bill. And it says, Winter's coming, Stark. The wolf, and on the back, and this one is gorgeous. I think Daniel might want this one, but um, either way, gorgeous. Man, is the hat. I don't know. It's gold. The bill's gold. Come on, it's so cool. And it says, Tyrion Roar, House Lannister, it's got a gorgeous one, and it's really beautiful, it's embossed, it's gorgeous. It says Game of Thrones on the back. So, please leave your comments below, and just know that I am so grateful to have your comments coming in. It makes my day every time I hear the notification go off, it really does. And, um... Just thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody's been so incredibly kind. I just, I feel so welcome and so, so great. I mean, I've got, you know, two of the most incredible women of all time in my corner and helping me and just rooting for me and I'm rooting for you. And I just think that's, that women are so awesome. And you know, when we do stick together and we do treat each other well, we can do great things. So here we go. And um, the men are incredible too. I mean, everybody's so kind and so smart. So thanks. You guys really. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Lots of love. Bye.